Welcome, everybody, to another live episode of The Grid. My name is Scott Kelby, and we have two special guests in the studio. RC is in Dubai, of all places, and uh, I, I saw a couple of broadcasts from him last night. He's doing some really cool, neat stuff that, that I don't get to do. But uh, <laughs> he, he's in his place, we have two beautiful gentlemen. First, for those of you who joined us at 2 o'clock, we had a special private uh, members only for Kelby One members only webcast where we asked tech questions and we got one of the giant super brains from Canon here, Rudy Winston. Rudy, thank you for joining Scott, us. Scott, my pleasure. So Rudy is the guy that I call when I get stuck on anything, right? Now, so Rudy is to my left. To my right is a man that I could not possibly be more jealous of. So he shot the Super Bowl. Not only, not only did he shoot the Super Bowl, right? And he shot, this is not his first Super Bowl. He shot, how many Super Bowls have you shot? 38. 38 Super Bowls. You're not allowed to speak to me again. <laughs> 38 Super Bowls, and he shot it with the new Canon 1DX Mark II, Mr. Yes. Peter Reed Miller. Thanks Peter, for having thanks me. Thanks for joining, Scott. man. All right, now we also have a special guest coming up later, Damian Strohmeyer, who also has shot many Super Bowls and had a 1DX. Everybody apparently was shooting the Super Bowl in the entire world but me. Wait a minute, Rudy, were you at the Super Bowl? Afraid not. Thank God. All right. <laughs> so anyway, but we are we are very glad that you're joining us. We're going to talk about, I mean, we have a, a really unique experience here. So Rudy's here to answer technical questions, and, and he crushed it on our technical thing. It was so much fun. So we're going to be doing a lot more things like that, and we and so Cannon lo loaned us to Rudy for the day. Because if any, any of your questions get too hard, Peter and I lean back. Yeah. And we look straight over Rudy. Rudy. So Rudy is here for those questions, and he knows all of it. He is, every time I have a question about some weird autofocus thing, what does this little knob do? He knows it on a terrifying level. But Peter, you got to actually shoot a, an interesting Super Bowl. It wasn't like a high scoring or great game. No, it, it was an interesting game. Um, you know, I kind of, uh, I kept looking for Carolina to pull it out, and they just, uh, they never did. Denver's defense was for real. Oh, man, they were, I, I thought, I was pulling for Denver because I wanted to see Peyton Manning go out on top. But I had no illusions that Denver was going to yeah. win, and I knew they had a great defense. But they really proved how great their defense was. They were insane. Yeah, I totally shut down Cam Newton, and I thought that was impossible. Now, you were thinking you were going to come back with some amazing pictures of Cam Newton, yes, didn't you? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Now, I know that you can drop your camera and get a good picture. So, but how'd you do overall? Overall, I did okay. Uh, I was not really in position for uh, the fumble that was kind of decisive play of the game. So that I don't have. Now, was it the fumble where they scored a touchdown off it or the fumble where Cam Newton looked at the ball and thought, should I yeah. jump on that? Yeah, I, don't know. That that, I think did. that was the real turning point. Yeah, there, that was. You know? But but I, I I have a theory that maybe he got hurt, that he didn't really seem to be as active. And there was a play in the first quarter where he ran out of bounds and kind of tried to leap over the player. Yeah. I wonder if he didn't hurt himself a little bit there. Okay, thank you. Because you know what? I was watching it live, and a number of times they would show him. He looked like he was kind of grimacing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and we were all saying, my wife's going like, is he hurt? Is he hurt? I'm like, I don't know. He seems okay, but he didn't seem like the Cam no, Newton. No, no. You know. Running it up the middle, never did that. No, and um, I mean, they, they build a lot of plays for him to run the ball. Yeah, yeah. By the way, this is not football talk, but I can't help <laughs> myself, right? So anyway, yeah. but uh, hey, look, someone just wrote in. This is great. Listen to this. So JMHS Photo said, this is the show I've waited five years for. Peter Reed Miller and Damian Strohmeyer on one show. All right, right? Okay. So Damian's going to be joining us for the second half where I want to hear his take on it and stuff. Um, and, of course, now people are asking questions <laughs> for Rudy, right, that I'm going to tell you now. Can I tell you something? So this is the question that, that they're going to and, – and I will answer a whole bunch of these. It will save us a bunch of time. Hi, Rudy. I love the new 1DX Mark II. But when, can we, when can we expect the 5D Mark IV? Can I tell you something? Rudy works for Canon. There's no way in the world that Rudy's going to tell you anything about an unreleased camera. Nobody ever. You know the day you hear about the, the unreleased camera? It's usually the day of it's, the release. It's released, yeah. So Rudy, if he knew and we could, we could waterboard him, he wouldn't do it, right? <laughs> Trump couldn't get it out of him. So here's the thing. Don't ask us about stuff that's not released. There's no way he's yeah. going to answer it. But we do have Rudy here uh, to, to answer questions. But Rudy really is here, not for you. For me and Peter. Yes. That's yes. why Rudy's here. Because when you ask a question that's really hard that 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 there is an answer for, we we pass the ball to Rudy. And man, he's good too. He was under pressure. Like we were taking questions from all over the world, and Rudy was like, Well, here's what it is. It's this and it's that and it's that and it's this. And we're like, Rudy, Rudy. No, appreciate the kind of words, so, Scott. So, oh, no, you were awesome. Okay, so you got to shoot the camera. 
Yes. Now, the ca I want to make it clear to everybody watching, the camera that you're shooting is not the final shipping version. No, it, I think it was a handmade uh, copy like that, they, yeah, that they put together with their own little fair hands there. And, and so, uh, so yeah, they had told us that there would be maybe more weather sealing and some, you know, they always fine tune it. But I will say, whatever it is, I, it was great. I mean, the, the autofocus was noticeably better. The files, the high ISO, great. Really a big difference. That was, so that was the big question we had on the last show. And I think that was a big difference. Yeah. I, th I think, my own personal opinion, you guys feel different. Well, you don't really, you can't count on this, this opinion. <laughs> but I thought the 1DX was the best high ISO camera I've ever used in my entire life. Yes. I thought it was hands down the best. This is better. This is better. It's Way better. noticeably better. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the noise yeah. is noticeably better. Yeah. Of course, let's hear Rudy. <laughs> Rudy, do you think the noise is better? No, they're, they're telling us, they're assuring us that it is. It, the sensor is new. And they're saying in particular, I know I'm repeating this from our previous show, uh, in particular at the high ISOs, you're going to see less chrominance noise in particular. Uh, so, yeah, this is a camera you're going to be able to work at even higher ISOs than before and to feel comfortable about it. So for you Lightroom and Photoshop users, that would be the color noise slider. You know, you're always dry. Because here's the thing. You know why you don't want to use noise reduction? Noise reduction in software does one thing. It blurs the image yeah. to hide the noise. Think about all the money we spend on amazing bodies and amazing lenses so they'll be sharp. And then what do you do at the very end? Grab the one slider that will blur your entire image. So I don't, I don't do any noise reduction whatsoever. Now, you could say, well, of course you don't, Scott. You use a 1DX. So imagine how much better. This one, I mean, it was noticeably. Yes. I, yes. I shot, I was shooting at like 20, I think it was 25,800. Is that right? I, th I thought it was 20,000, but it was higher than that. I put a nice, a good size picture on my, on my blog. And I think one of the things is, I think people forget that noise doesn't just affect the picture by adding noise. You don't get as much contrast and you lose a lot of color vibrance. What were your thoughts about the, the color of the files? They look great. I mean, again, it was just a look to them. I'm not a real, you know, pixel picker sort of person, but I mean, it, just in terms of liking the, what I saw, they look great. That, that was the thing that's, that struck me the most. As, as soon as I got back, because I had it for two days. I had it for a regular NFL game, <laughs> like just some end of the season loser game and a college bowl game. But that was the thing that struck me. The very first thing, Brad and I went in, went in my office and we're looking at the images and like, I don't know what they did to the raw image, but they've done something to the raw image. It looks better. Yeah. It doesn't look, it doesn't look as flat. It doesn't look all flat like raws usually do. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. looked like it, it would look the colors. I th see, that was the thing that really struck me. How was the weather when you were shooting? It was okay. Out yeah. There, the right? weather was fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and I shot, uh, both, both of mine I shot, uh, one was inside a dome. One was a day game. So I shot inside a dome at real high ISO. So I was between, I was up to 4,000 ISO, like, all game because I was inside a dome and then I would put on a 1.4 tel extender. So sometimes I was higher than 4,000. I was at 6,400 or whatever, but I also shot some outside the locker room in the hallways. I was at 20,000 something. The color on high ISO, the contrast on high ISO yeah. was tremendous, but the overall color of the files, Brad and I are looking at them and we're going, what's going on here? Yeah, because yeah. you know what it is? At the end of the day, you want the best looking image to come out of your camera. Yeah. That's what really impressed me. So while we could talk about specs a lot, we could we could certainly talk about it has this many frames per minute. At the end of the day, I think it's what the image looks like. Yep, totally. It, is, the, is the noise really low? Is the color really vibrant? Is it crisp? Is it sharp and all? And I thought it excelled at that. Yes. What, what else did anything else stand out about it? Well, I think uh, I think the other thing I like about the cameras uh, with the new CFast technology, uh, you never really hit your buffer. Yeah. I mean, in, in a, in a uh, the previous camera, you usually got about 30 raw frames, I think, somewhere around there, Rudy. Uh, this, it's 180. So you can have that play where there's an interception and then a fumble and then, you know, going after it and, you and can a just pile go, up. <laughs> yeah, and, and then the jubilation afterwards and you get it all. And you get it you get all. Every bit of it. Because yeah. you know what? The worst thing in the world is when you're doing that and it starts going click, 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 yeah. click. It's just, it, you can feel the pain coursing through your body when you see that yep. happen. Yep. Uh, hey, Rudy, we've got a couple of questions uh, here. Um, so Tom asks, is this body really four times better than the, the 7D Mark II? So I think what Tom is asking is, is the price price point 
really that much better. Because the 7D Mark II, we always talked about as the little brother yeah, yeah. to the to the 1D. You shot the 7D Mark II. Yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, we yeah, both I did. did. Yeah. Great little camera. 7D Mark II is a tremendous performance value in our system. And, uh, you know, really just gives you a tremendous bang for the buck. No question. Uh, as far as, you know, is this going to be worth four times the money? I think if you leverage the performance that this camera offers, if you leverage features like even the viewfinder, the fact that you got, you know, a, a really nice big viewfinder with high magnification. Uh, if you are working with uh, faster lenses in particular and taking advantage of the, uh, the high precision autofocus it's possible when you're using like a 2.8 a lens, or conversely, if you're working with tele-extenders and you're shooting at an effective f8 uh, as your maximum aperture with certain combinations, like even a 100 to 400 with a 1.4 version 3 extender, this has just some tremendous, tremendous capabilities uh, in terms of what you can get. Uh, and, you know, for many people, they may find it worth the money. Uh, those who say, now nah, I'll, I'll stick with the 7D Mark II, like I say, it's arguably the best performance value in our system. Working pros, I think, would find a way to pay for it really quickly. Yeah. Because can I tell you something? This sounds silly, and I, wanna, I really want to hear your thoughts on this, Peter. It's, it's 14 frames a second without pulling any fast ones. You can go to 16 frames a second if you do the mirror flip up and all that. But 14 frames a second, the difference between 10 and 14, how big a difference? It's a big difference. It's a big, big difference. And can I tell you something? And I, I was talking to Peter about this at lunch. When you shoot 14 frames a second, it's two frames a second faster than the old 1DX. Yes. How many frames does it feel faster? <laughs> a lot. It a feels lot. like 10 frames is frame. When you're sitting next to another guy that you know is shooting like 10 or 12, it's like, <laughs> I mean, it's like, and they're looking at you. They're like looking at your thing going, and they're looking at their camera. And they're like, I mean, it's because sometimes it makes a difference between the quarterbacks back here with the ball and the next frame, it's gone. Yeah. You don't want the frame where it's gone. And this is okay. You want it as it's leaving his fingertips. Coming off the fingertips, and you get that. And, and more running backs with both feet off the ground. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a and great guys, point. And guys yeah. diving where it's at their fingertips. Yeah. Because once they've caught the ball, depending on where they're at, but once it's, they pulled it to their chest and they're coming down, you've already missed the one that would have made you the money. The money shot is gone. And so I don't think people realize once you try it and you realize what, the, what I wish we could, I wish I could have thought to show that. It would have been great to show here's what 10 frames a second is and here's the exact same scene when you have 14 frames. Yeah. You have four more pictures to look at to find the exact right peak moment of action to use a word from Peter Reed Miller. <laughs> Peak moment. Say it with me. Peak moment peak, peak. of action. So, all right. Um, now, you don't shoot video. No, I don't. Me either. Do How about you? Rarely. <laughs> Rarely. So, we're not going to be much help on that, but we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, Doc Chevalier. Oh, I think I think I said mm -hmm. that right. Said, Rudy, do you know if the 1DX Mark II will release about the same time outside the U.S.? So, I guess this is for one of our international viewers. Is it slated for worldwide release sometime in April, or is it going to be U.S. My, first? You don't know? My understanding is that that's worldwide. Worldwide? Uh, that's my understanding anyway. All right. Um, Harley Pugs asks, how many 1DX Mark IIs were being shot at the Super Bowl? Two. Two. You and Damien. Me and Damien. And we got them both here today. That's awesome. Hey, can we show a picture? So uh, I saw this picture. Uh, actually, a buddy of mine at Canon sent this to me. Uh, it was a picture... Uh, of the actual game and how much, like, Canon did a press release. It was, the game was dominated by Canon glass. Look, I think there's one, one black lens there. And, uh, and, and I, I've been shooting all season. You see this all the time, too. Yeah. The, the sidelines in every game, not just the Super Bowl, are absolutely dominated by Canon. Absolutely dominated. It's, it's not even close. But uh, and there's somebody in there with a the, with the video camera that doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's you see. Wait, there's a second black. Cause no, no, yeah, that's yeah. a video camera. But it, it's it, they dominated. But that that's that's everything I go to when I went to the U.S. Yeah. Open when I'm shooting uh, indie sports car. Wherever you go, uh, it absolutely dominates. It, it is the photographer. It's it's what got me on Canon because I was you know I was shooting Nikon and it was the first time that I shot the 1DX. I had it as a loner. The first time I shot it, and it was the autofocus performance on the old camera that got me to switch. Yeah. That is a talk about the new one, uh, the low light. So the, the, the being able to lock focus in low light, because a lot of the, like earlier we were talking to people who were shooting really high ISO at Friday Night Football. 
like outdoors. Can, right. you, can you speak any to that about the low light performance? Yeah, across of the autofocus. Right, ac across the board, they've improved the low light sensitivity at all the 61 focusing points by about a stop, and in particular at the center focusing point, uh, they've improved it even a little more. So no question that whatever you were getting with a 1DX up to now in low light situations like high school football, it's a perfect example, right. uh, you're going to be that much better now uh, if you were to step up to a 1DX Mark II. Yeah, so going back to that person, that question, is it really four times better? If you're a working pro and you're not getting the shots or you're missing the shots, or I mean, it, it makes a difference. Yeah. Um, so Anonymous84291 <laughs> asks, did, you, did the high ISO allow you to use the 200 to 400 F4? Yes, uh, that's what I used for most of the game. Uh, I was around uh, 4,000 ISO without the extender, and then when I dropped in the extender, I went to 8,000 ISO. And stuff looks great. Yeah, at 8,000, it looks fine. Yeah, yeah, it looks just fine. Yeah, if it looks good at 20-something thousand, you know it looks good there. Uh, so Johan just asked, I think we just answered que mm -hmm. his question, yeah. Peter, which was how high'd you go on the ISO? Um, Harley wants to hear the, the the 14 frames a second, what it sounds like. Can you can you crank, crank it off for us, 14 frames? I, I think we can do that. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's a sweet sound. Ah. <sighs> But really, you can't enjoy it until you're beside somebody else who's at 10. That's when you really, that's when they just look at you and they're like. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Susby asks, CFast cards are how much? Like 400 bucks? How much is a CFast card? I think they're running for less than that. But that's yeah. an easy thing to find uh, just doing a quick web search. Uh, I, th uh, I think I got a 64 uh, gig Lexar at e uh, off uh, Amazon for about 200 Okay. Yeah, yeah about two hundred. About the same price as the CF. Yeah. So. Now, so now I can't swear that this is up to date information I'm going to give you, but I'm going to give you the information anyway. The other day I was looking on B and H. They had a pre order on on the One DX Mark II. Now here's the deal they had. So the the One DX is fifty nine ninety five, correct? Mark Mark II. Right. Fifty nine ninety nine. And then it's it's three hundred dollars more if you want the C Fast card and a C Fast reader, which also does Compact Flash, I think. Is three hundred dollars more, right? Three hundred dollars more, right? So B and H has a deal with an instant three hundred dollar rebate. Oh, so there you go. So yeah. if you're going to buy one, go to B and H, get the deal with the three hundred dollar rebate, so you get a sixty five gig, sixty four, sixty five gigabyte. Wow, that when they start gig, making yeah, those, yeah. <laughs> you get a sixty four gigabyte C fast card, and you get the reader, and it costs you exact same amount as if you just bought the body for fifty nine ninety nine. Right. Now. That was in an email that I saw the other day. If it's not there today, don't shoot the messenger. It was there certainly just a couple of days ago. Um, so uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, oh, can we see some of Peter's shots from the game? Man. Hey, well, <laughs> sure. So are these shots we're going to see all from this camera? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Oh, nice. A little uh, stiff arm. I think this is a play that uh, Newton might have gotten hurt on. I think that's the one he got hurt. Yeah, yeah. when you ran out of bounds? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he landed pretty hard on that one. Now, who's that guy with the ball? Oh, uh, uh, some his brother plays for the Giants. I know that. Yeah, his uh, brother's good, right? Yeah, yeah, his brother's won a couple <laughs> Super Bowls. All right, dude, your timing is sick. Fourteen frames a second makes a hero out of all of us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> nice. Oh, I think that's a little face mask. Yeah, yeah. A that bit. looked a little masky. Dude, these images are so sharp. Yeah, they were amazing. Just I'm guessing. I'm just guessing you didn't do a lot of post processing to these. No, no, I'm I'm not much of a post processor. You know what? If you shoot like this, you don't have to be. <laughs> Look at that. All right. So, how many games was this from, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> nice, dude. Your stuff looks great. Oh Thank my you, God. Scott. Thanks. Jeez. That's the fumble from the other side. Yeah, the fumble. And here's Cam. Ran into some trouble. And this is uh, Jonathan Stewart going up and over. Oh, this is the up and over. Yeah, yeah. You had a great position for this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great picture, meaning, meaningless play in the, in, the, uh, in the scheme of things. Nice little, little jubilation. jubilation. Yep. And a little more Peyton. Yeah, that was the two-point conversion. Oh, look. That was a great two. You know, nobody mentioned Peyton made that clutch pass there. Yeah. Oh, that's a good <laughs> shot, dude. He has a that's goofy a, look on his no, face. No, he has a great look on his face. That's like, that's really good. Hey, I got to be straight with you. 
I think you could do this for a living. <laughs> I'm so, serious. You got a couple of lucky frames there. Dude, that was really good. How many games is that from? That was really great. You know, one thing I would quickly like to add, you know, fans who watch that game know that it started on the West Coast in daylight, even though the field was in shadow. Right. And then kind of tr from there went into effectively a night game. And most of those shots looked like they were taken in the second half when yeah. it was night, not yeah. like, you yeah. know, sunlight uh, still coming down. Yeah. And I, I think that's a testament to, to your ability, sure, and to some degree to the uh, quality that that camera produces oh, yeah. as you start elevating those ISOs, because I'm sure you were working at higher ISO then than that's, you were in the first quarter. Definitely. That's four up to even 8,000 ISO. All right, Great let's stuff. see. Great stuff. So, Johan asks, did you also shoot some of the artists at halftime, or were you only <laughs> restricted to shoot the game? And if so, did you do? No, I did not. I actually, um, when they bring on the halftime artists and they bring on all the sets, they tend to cordon off areas. So, I was trapped on the opposite side of the field from the, and they never, they never took down the ropes. So, uh -huh. I didn't, all I saw was on the screen. Oh, okay. Was it cool to see that in person? Uh, it wasn't the greatest uh, halftime show of all time, I don't think. It was when Bruno Mars came out. Yeah, well, he saved it. He, he saved, saved it. it. Yeah. And so did Beyonce. She saved it. Together yeah. they saved it. So you know what's interesting? Somebody pointed out to me. Somebody sent me a text and said, four of the top songs on the iTunes were by Coldplay, which is probably the first time ever in the top 10 Coldplay Coldplay I don't know how much Coldplay paid the the, the NFL but uh, it was well money well yeah, spent just yeah. kidding of course um so John SWM asked my big question is is why not two CFast card slots Rudy oh uh, that'd be really cool I think for yes, a lot of users <laughs> um but there was I think a real sensitivity that certainly not all but a big proportion of the sales of this camera are going to go to news organizations and so on who have existing workflows and existing inventory oh, of recording media. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think they, I'm sure it was debated long and hard, but the final decision was to start off with giving some sense of backward compatibility and then at the same time moving forward by add, having the CFAST 2.0 card slot that would give us clearly a new level of performance that we haven't had in an EOS camera up to this point. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you know what, though? Can I tell you something? Think about this. Let's say Canon came out with it, and it had two CFAST slots. That's all it had. What would the uproar be people would go right crazy. now? People would, people go, would go crazy. crazy. Yeah. I've got all this money invested in compact flash. I don't mm. want to move to CFAST, blah, 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 blah. Mm. So what, but I am, hoping, I am hoping that one day it's an option. Certainly they could do it. They could make an option if they do it. Yeah. Uh, this is one for me. JMHS Photo asks, if all things are equal, I wonder if the grid will be making the same kind of show when the Nikon D5 is out. Otherwise, this is really slanted. So here's the thing. Uh, JMHS Photo. So Canon uh, contacted me and asked me if I would like to shoot the, uh, the camera at a regular <laughs> football game. And... A bowl game. The college bowl game was pretty cool. But they asked me if I want to shoot them. Cannon said, hey, Peter and Damien are going to be shooting the Super Bowl. Would you like to have them on the grid? I'm like, would I like to have them on the grid? You mean like a couple days after the Super Bowl? I was thrilled to do it. They sent me the camera. They loaned me Rudy. Cannon has been amazingly supportive. Nikon. Well, I'm still waiting. <laughs> Nikon hasn't asked me to do anything. Nikon hasn't sent me the camera. Nikon didn't send me a press release. Nikon has not called me, talked to me. But by the way, back when I used to shoot Nikon, they didn't do it then either. So anyway, moving right along. <laughs> by the way, just so you know, I talk about the things that I shoot. I shoot Canon, so I talk about it. When I used to shoot Nikon, you know what I talked about? Never Canon. I never mentioned Canon in any way ever, in any way, shape, or form. I never said anything bad about Canon. I just didn't say Canon. The words Canon didn't come off my lips. Now, I shoot Canon. Right now, I've been talking a lot about football. You know why? Because I've been shooting football all season. Now that football season's over, you will not hear me talking about it. Doesn't mean that I'm a shill for the NFL. It just means football season's over. It's starting to sound like Kevin, what's his name? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> More questions. Can you show a close-up of the camera, Rudy? Can you? All of our cameramen just freaked out. Yeah. They're like, where do we go? Which camera? Where Sorry. do you want to go to? Over here. Here we go. We're gonna go, we're gonna go in the jib cam. Jib cam. There you go. It looks almost identical to the Canon EOS 1DX, 
But if you tip it forward a little, you'll yeah. notice there's a GPS. slight change on the very front where they put GPS and a depth laser. Yeah. Laser. Laser. So, can we see the back? Oh, sure. It looks just like <laughs> the 1DX before it. Well, the control layout is very, very similar to the previous 1DX. Uh, a few very minor uh, changes in the contour of a couple of the switches to make them a little easier to detect by feel. Uh, and so on. And the one other thing, which is kind of neat, is your switch for live view and video operation is now an integrated switch with your start stop button, kind of like we have on the 5DS and the 5D Mark III and the 7D Mark II and so on. That's right up top. So that was another enhancement over the previous generation 1DX. All righty. Uh, this is for Peter. So, Peter, how many images did you take during the game when you were using the four, the 14 frames per second? And you're just going to have to estimate. Of course, you probably didn't count them, did you? An embarrassingly large amount. I shot just a little over 6,000 uh, <gasps> images. Yeah. Like about, well, you know what? I've always been told that I way undershoot a game. I shoot about 2,000 images, mm -hmm. and people are always like, dude, you're not shooting. You're not pushing the button anymore. <laughs> So. Well, I pushed it a few too many times on, on Sunday. But, what, would, uh, what would you normally shoot? I would shoot between two and three. Okay, that makes me feel so bad. Yeah. I did right. a lot of pregame, a lot of stuff, you know, people warming up and everything like that. So. Oh, okay. But you don't know exactly, well, there's no way we can know exactly how many you shot of at 14 frames a second. But well, you're not scared to do it, right? Because we yeah. got a buffer that's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I pretty much, they were all at 14 frames per second. Yeah, right? they were all, for, well, that's the thing is, too. So I think that, that you have to understand the camera has a buffer, a memory buffer that lets you shoot, right? And you mentioned it shoots 170 frames it's per second in 100, raw. 170 raw images. Raw, raw images. Right. If you switch to JPEG, which is what I shoot for, for sports. It never stop. You can just shoot forever. You can hold down 14 frames a second. You can you can put it on a tripod, tape it down with a piece of tape, go to the restroom, come back, it'll still be shooting. Yeah. 14 frames a second as long as you want. It'll just it's the buffer and the C fast card together are a dangerous combination <laughs> because you yeah. could just you can start at the beginning of the game if you had enough memory and just it's like shooting video. It's just like yeah, 14 frames a second is it's really quick. Of, the, yes, the photographer's yes. dream and the editor's nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go, exactly. there you go. Um, so this is another one for Rudy. Uh, well, there's a couple here for Rudy. These actually would have been great in the really tech show we did earlier. Uh, do the AF points work with all f-stops? Yeah, let me clarify a couple of things here real quick. Uh, number one, first off, you can take a picture at any f-stop you want. If you want to shoot a picture at f11, f22, or whatever, that has nothing to do with autofocus capability. Uh, what the camera cares about, what any camera cares about in terms of autofocus capability is what's the maximum effective aperture of the lens you're using. With lenses 5.6 and faster as maximum aperture, you can use all 61 points. If you are using a lens with an extender where the maximum effective aperture is now f8, in many cases, depending on the converter and the lens, you can now focus, and this is a breakthrough, with all 61 points. And even if your combination of lens and converter is not on that list, you can still get F8 autofocus with the lens wide open or at any f-stop, but you can focus uh, with an F8 maximum aperture at either 13 points or 9 points. So even if you have older legacy equipment, you're going to have more f capability here to work with tele-extenders than we've ever had on an EOS camera up to this point. There you go. That was more than I was expecting. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, but well, before we come back, we're going to ask Peter one more thing. When we come back, we're going to have Damien Strohmeyer with us. He was also the other guy. Dun, dun, dun. He was the other guy at the Super Bowl shooting a 1DX Mark II. We want to hear from him. So overall, before we, before we take a break uh, and, and get, bring Damien in, overall, um, you really noticed a big difference. I certainly yes. did. Yes, yeah. Um, so it was, for you, of course, the frames per second you can't ignore mm -hmm. because it is what it is. But I, I was really, I, I was wanted to make sure it wasn't just me that was on the file. Look, no, the, look fi the files file. are, are noticeably better to me. Uh, and the autofocus is noticeably, noticeably improved. better. And then, as they said, the, the C-fast and, and the ability to, to shoot through the buffer. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's all kinds of little tweaks. Oh, and, yeah. and some of them I didn't even know about until we did the show earlier today. Where <laughs> I Rudy's going, oh, and you know, oh, did you know, like, in silent mode? So, you know, you can do silent mode no. for, like, shooting a wedding or something, which doesn't matter to you because, like, you're a football <laughs> photographer. But there's a silent mode for the shutter, right? And it's not silent. It's just much, much quieter. So it's usually click, and it's like click. Cool. But you can only do it on single frame, uh -huh. like one single shot. With the previous camera. With the previous camera. On this one, I didn't know this until the oh, but mm -hmm. now like I'm an authority on it. Uh, 
I'm always an authority on the camera when Rudy is with two feet of me. Is uh, you can do it in in uh, in continuous. Oh mode. wow! So wow. now now okay. you can shoot. It's and he did he did a demo for us earlier with it, so it was quite nice. Peter, thank you very much cool. for sharing your thank experiences. You, Scott. We look forward to uh, seeing you again here. And you've yep. got a, a class on Kelby One that is awesome. Yes, and uh, we're talking about another class. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we look forward to seeing you again uh, here, of course, on the grid when you're taping your next class <laughs> and in the future. So thanks very much for being with us. We're gonna take a short break. When we come back. Damien's joining us. We're gonna talk about his Super Bowl experience. We're still answering your questions, and we'll be right back live here on the grid. Create your own space at squarespace.com. Hi, I'm Richard Burnaby. Welcome to the beautiful Blue Ridge Parkway of North Carolina. We're going to go on a photographic road tour, photographing waterfalls, sunrises, sunsets, grain landscapes, mountains. We're going to talk about gear. We're going to talk about camera settings. And most importantly, we're going to talk about my thought process that goes into each of the compositions, the locations we visit. So I hope you check out my brand new class only on KelbyOne.com. I'm Kaylee Greer. In this class, you're gonna learn how to get the best photos possible out of your dog. How to work with your dog and keep him engaged and interested. How to capture action shots of your dog flying at about a gazillion miles an hour. We're gonna take a trip to the shelter to learn how to work with shelter dogs and give them a second chance through photography. Come check out my new class on KelbyOne.com. Hey, this is Terry White, and I'm here recording a new class at Kelby One called How to Take Advantage of Adobe Creative Cloud. So whether you're a new Creative Cloud member, existing, new, old, you got to check out this class to see all the things you're missing about Creative Cloud. Hey, we're back. Scott and Rudy are here, and we are very fortunate to be joined by Damien Strohmeyer, who's the other guy that got to shoot the Super Bowl. I like you equally as less as I do, Peter. So thank you very much for being on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Scott. Can we take a look at some of your photos so I can be even more depressed and suicidal than I was a few moments yeah, ago? Yeah, but it was kind of a pedestrian effort for me. We'll see. Oh, you know? yeah. Let's take a look. So here's some of Damien's shots from the game. That's Oh, I like that yeah, one. I, yeah. That's my favorite. Look the way he's leaping. Yeah. Maybe okay, well, I'm envisioning. If you're watching at home and going, where are the photos? Right? They're not, they're not. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oh, that's a good shot. That's a great, like, that's a great of a smile. Ooh, look, that's good. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, you know what? I feel better about one thing. At least I know why you guys are shooting the Super Bowl. Look at that. You guys have such amazing timing. Ooh, tube. Nice, on the other side. Was that, was that the punt return? Yeah, yeah. Dude, he broke an NFL record on that punt return. You were like right in the right spot. Nice shot. That's his good shot. Yeah, that's got impact. I mean, they all do now, that in particular. You know what it is? Look at the color, though. Also, look at the shadow retention in, in, the, you know, in the faces. You know, you're really maintaining oh, yeah. that. You're maintaining a lot of detail in the shadows, which is always a challenge in sports. Boy, you are. I really like that shot. You know, the, the game looks a lot better through these stills than it did when I was watching at home. <laughs> Peyton. Oh, it's doing a Ringo. Peace and love, man. It's a great day. Oh, nice. That is very nice. Oh, geez. You guys make me sick. You make me sick. That was only 2,000 images, Peter. Yeah. Oh, hashtag roasted, <laughs> hashtag burn, hashtag shots fired. All right. So, um, so now we, we, I got, I got, we, we heard, you know, Peter's like thought about, and you heard my thought about the actual look of the images. Cause we can talk about specs all day long. We have Rudy here for spec love. 
What do you think about the image quality of the image files? Big change in the high ISOs. We're routinely now going up at ISOs we haven't been able to do in the past. Um, this is going to continue to get better. Uh, I had you know the camera for a while before the Super Bowl. Shot stuff at 8,000 ISO in a high school gym, and it was beautiful. You know, great detail. And the other thing is that I don't know what they've done to the files. I mean, I'm not a tech person, but. The post production was minimal on this stuff. Yeah, I mean, they that did was pretty something, much didn't like, they? Okay, a little level, a little, little, uh, you know, auto contrast, and you know, and finish done. it, sharp it, finish it, done. You know? So can and we ask like, Rudy what it is that they did? If you did something. What is it? There's a couple of things. I, I made a comment in an earlier uh, presentation that we did that this camera really makes the most of its 20 million pixels, and uh, you know, we, we've said that uh, you know, you're going to get better noise control at higher ISOs, in particular with chrominance noise. But beyond that, uh, they've added a new technology that we haven't had in our cameras before called diffraction correction, which actually is a smart form of sharpening. You think of lens diffraction and you think of shooting at small apertures like F16, F22, and so on, which of course these guys are not doing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, but it also has the impact of giving us better sharpening and smarter sharpening, even at wide apertures, including things like cutting the softening effect of the low-pass filter in front of the imaging sensor and so on. So uh, it, it really it gives you out of the box a very nice ready-to-go file in a lot of different ways. Tonal range, uh, lack of noise, and uh, and just a crispness without having to jack your sharpening settings up, you know, way above what the defaults are. And uh, so I'm not surprised that you found that, you know, assuming you did your job as a photographer, which I know you would, and properly expose, that, you know, the rest of the images didn't require a heck of a lot of, you know, cutting and pasting, so to speak, to get a good result. Yeah, that's the minimal, minimal preparation. Yeah, I did them on the plane on the way down there. It like, took me like, to do those 20 images or 25, it took like 30 minutes, like a minute an image. It's, yeah. Nice. It's really minimal. Nice. Yeah, and, and they look like the crispness and the color. I, that was what really struck me was, was like the color vibrancy and stuff because traditionally a raw file looks kind of flat. I mean, it just straight up does because when you're shooting in JPEG, your camera's adding contrast and it's adding noise reduction and it's adding sharpening and it's adding all these things to make the image look good. When you switch to raw, you just told the camera, turn all that stuff off. Give me the flat raw file. I'll add that in post. But I'm looking at Brad and I are sitting there looking at the raw images, and we're like, we. One of the things we kept asking ourselves is this the raw? Because they looked, the color was so yeah. on, and it was like I think that that's for a lot of people the dream. We we don't want to spend a lot of time. I, I devoted my whole life to teaching people how to be faster in post-production because nobody really wants to do post-production, yeah. right? You want to spend as much time behind the camera. Wanna, yeah. What about the? Um, now, we crop a lot in sports, right? And, and I, I probably crop more than you do. <laughs> you, you seem to shoot stuff very tight. Um, but when you have to crop way in, that extra two megapixels, it, it feels like more than two megapixels they added. Yeah, like I said, it's something to do with the quality of the file, obviously. Yeah, because, really. I mean, like, you know, I did my normal, you know, some cropping, obviously, but also just overall, this file was just really, really, really good. And, uh, you know, when you notice it on a little tiny little laptop, you think about taking it out on your home computer or your, your business computer, your big screen, well, I think you're going to really notice it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Something, something's going on now. <laughs> yeah, something's yeah. going on because it, it's, it's, two, it's two megapixels more than the 1DX, the regular 1DX. But it feels like more because I took a shot. So I was in the end zone at, at the bowl game. Bowl, college bowl. The end zone. What bowl was that anyway? It was the Outback Bowl, right? Really? I, and you know what? In, in honor of that, I, <laughs> I'm glad who, I didn't who say played that. in that. <laughs> Two high school teams. Oh, okay. Anyway, no, it was it was, it was good. It was oh. the balls, and you know. Anyway, I I've done that game. Have you? Yeah, it used to be in Orlando, right? No, that's that's a different. That's ball. another one. No, oh, okay. Outback's from Tampa, no. so it was, okay. Anyway, okay, all right. I'm trying to get through this. Okay, so all it's right. just I'm feeling like really like selling my gear. Anyway, <laughs> so so I'm out the Outback Bowl. I'm in the end zone. Well, it's like t the guy picks picks the ball in the end zone, picks it in the end zone or on the one yard line, takes it all the way to the house. Right, it's a pick six. Goes to the other end of the field. Well, I'm sitting in the other end zone. I'm a hundred and something yards away. I'm at the back of the end zone, so I'm more than hundred yards away. And 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 I'm using. I had the one DX Mark II for a day or two. I shoot all the way to the other end of the field, and I cropped it in, and I got a shot that you could publish, and it was 1,100 pixels. That's not giant, 
but it was 1,100 pixels and it was sharp and it was okay, it was usable at the other end of the field. Right, yeah. You're not making posters out of every one of your pictures. No, of course too. not. You know, that's no. like the other thing. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, just go look. Where, do you, where are most of our images used today on the web? If you're yeah. lucky enough to get on the front page of SI or ESPN, in reality, how big is your image going to wind up being? This big. Yeah. It's going to be that big. That's why you have to shoot so tight and you have to shoot so crisp like these guys are shooting because you have to tell the story. You don't if it's way downfield, you don't even see anything because the images are shown so small. It's different on the cover of the magazine or in a two page spread or something. But on the web where this stuff is put instantly, the images have to have impact and you can take an 1100 pixel image and they'll go, we have to knock this down to 400 pixels. So it's it's that extra. I think it's a I don't think people realize what a big thing that is in sports. Right. Having that extra little reach there makes a big difference. Um, question for uh, for Damien. Well, this is kind of like what we've been talking about. How much better did you find the dynamic range? You talked about that in the shadows. Yeah, we did, we did to it earlier. You know, the, definitely, we're getting more shadow retention and at, with a minimal amount of effort. And I don't know exactly why that is. A lot of times, but you're trying to pull out a real a, a face that's deeply in the shade. Uh, you know, you're really working that file to make that happen. Do you notice how we keep looking at Rudy? Well, like, I'm, we, I'm, we I want to make sure I'm getting it right. Us. You're doing that <laughs> whole dynamic range like, thing, you know, and I'm like, I don't know what What's really yeah. going on? Because something's <laughs> yeah. going on. Well, you know, like I have to, you know, when you start talking technical things, I usually get down and genuflect in front of Rudy because he knows what's going on. Like I'm like, I'm just a photographer. You know, I kind of like make I it know. up as I go and along. He's, remember the the movie Rudy? That was about Rudy. Uh, anyway, so, oh. <laughs> somebody wrote this. I'm just going to just somebody wrote anonymous eight one seven seven wrote. Rudy might be the smartest person in the photo industry, yeah. and so he this might. is why yeah, I'm flattered. Yeah. This is why we keep looking at Rudy and going. Yeah. They did something because I mean, obviously, we know. Okay, so you make your own sensors. Yes. You make your own sensors. Yes. You made this sensor. Yeah, this is and it's new. You made it, Rudy? No, well, oh, okay. not quite. Uh, Rudy with a little <laughs> hammer. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be scary. Mm. But uh, now Canon uh, has made our own CMOS sensors for a long time, but this is a totally new from the ground up sensor, okay. and they haven't. And, there's a lot of information they haven't told us about it yeah. uh, in terms of its architecture and stuff. But we're you know expecting some mighty positive things out of it. And it looks like, you know, this, what you're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. Oh, yeah, and what yeah. Peter saw, and because we, we were all at lunch talking about this, and I'm like, something's, this something's better. Is like, you know, but, but I will say this, that Canon has been very conservative about what they've said about it. Now, we're all using, all of us did not use the final finished in camera, and Rudy will tell you, th they put some extra love at the end, like they saved the, the image tweaking and the sharpness and all for the very end of the process. We're, we're still a couple of months away from that thing shipping. Right, yeah. So what we have are not, what any of us shot is not a finished product, and it's still really, really good. And so when, when Rudy talks, because he were, we none of us work for Canon, he works for Canon, he has to go, well, we're expecting, well, we anticipate. We don't have to. We can go, we shot this thing. Yeah, this is can, what it looked like. Yeah. So he's, you know, you have to understand. Uh, I would point out, too, to Anonymous 8177, Rudy might be the smartest person in the photo industry. I'm not sure how much competition there is for that. Um, but, you know, like, you know, just saying, you know, we're photographers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. All Thank right, you. Rudy, question for <laughs> you. you. And, and I, I'll, I'll chime in on this one as well. Johan asks, uh, Rudy, if you're not a sports photographer but a lifestyle fashion photographer, would you still recommend this Wendy X Mark II to people? You know, I'm glad you asked that question because I, seriously, uh, because I, I think that sometimes we, our company, Canon, make a bit of a mistake when we talk about this in just the sports context, just the birds in flight kind of yeah. context, just the newspaper photojournalism context. There are a lot of very cool virtues in this camera that I think any serious, dedicated photographer could learn to really work well with. Uh, we've talked about the image quality, the focusing performance, and it isn't just capturing split second, you know, fast moving uh, uh, subjects. Uh, there are an awful lot of things about this camera in terms of just its Im immediate responsiveness. You can slow the drive speed down. You don't have to shoot at 14 frames a, at 14 frames a second, but the responsiveness that this camera gives you, the solidity of it. I mentioned already the viewfinder, uh, the fact that now your focusing points are lit up all the time. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, you know, difficulty seeing where you're focusing in, in dim situations. Uh, on and on. Uh, there are tremendous virtues of this camera. So if you were shooting events, weddings, even things like portraits, if you were a school photographer with the durability of this camera, the ability to shoot thousands of pictures a week and keep on humming, I, I think this camera really has a much broader potential audience looking for a high-end product than just 
our colleagues that are shooting sports. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, told, I also think uh, talking about the fashion industry, you know, that dynamic range, too, is like another thing. Like, Great gives you point. a lot of options, you know, between, the, you know, the very deep shadows and, and uh, the highlights. I think that's, you know, obviously a selling point, too. Great point. Yeah. My, my go-to camera when I'm shooting portraits is the Wendy X. Yeah. The, I, 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 the old one, the one I use for college sports. Anyway, um, no, the but that, that's my, the yeah. Outback, is the Outback? Yeah, I called? think of some point. Yeah, I ate there last night. Yeah, okay. So anyway, <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. Is um, it's a it is an amazing camera. If you have to shoot a wedding, and you've got so whatever camera you're shooting a wedding with, this would be better. I don't care what camera it is you have. I don't care if I don't care Hasselblad makes it because for shooting a wedding, I cannot think of a better camera to use than that. Now the 5D Mark III, I think, is the is like the go-to camera for wedding photographers. But this is better. Just saying. I'm just saying. Um, Anonymous asks, machine gun, does it have a silencer? So we did talk about that, right? We had It has the uh, thing. Nerd question, here we go. This is from Tab Tabij Cherry? I'm sorry. I'm, I know I'm probably saying that wrong. But what is the shutter life expectancy? He, he, they have a friend with a seven, 700,000 shutter clicks on a 1DX and still going strong. What do you, what do you think is the shutter life expectancy? Sounds like a Rudy question. <laughs> the engineers are saying that the camera has been durability tested. And when they say that, they mean the whole camera, not just the shutter on a bench. Uh, the whole camera has been durability tested to 400,000 exposures. That doesn't mean that at 400,001, the camera stops working. Uh, so uh, Terry goes on to say that uh, he has a buddy with the previous 1DX that was also rated at 400,000 exposures that he says his buddy's up to 700,000 or whatever. And that certainly can happen, particularly if you take, you know, decent care of your cameras and keep them relatively clean and all. Um, but yeah, the, the tested durability that our engineers are claiming uh, is 400,000 shots on this camera. And that's for, you know, all aspects of it, not just the shutter, but the mirror box and the drive system and so on. That's going to last Peter a couple games. There you you know? Yeah, that's yeah. two games for Peter. Yeah, yeah, so. I got a question for Damien. It's I'm going to. It's their question, but I want to hear the answer. Oh. <laughs> Anonymous four zero nine seven, my new best friend, asks Damien, "What are your typical settings for focus setup?" For a situation like the Super Bowl. Well, it wouldn't be different to the Super Bowl. It would be anywhere else. And I'm a case four guy. Oh, case four? Did you get that from Peter Reed and Miller? Yeah, I don't know. We probably discussed it at times. Uh, you know, it's like we're always searching for the, you know, the, the silver bullet, the magic bullet, you know, that's going to end all your autofocus questions. Of course, there is no direct answer for that. But, you know, I do think case four for football seems to be a logical, um, you know, choice. Do you tweak any of the like auto photo inside of four? Or you just go to four. I don't know what thing things I'm supposed to tweak. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Know. Well, no, no. Hopefully uh, none. I'm because if you tell me which ones, I'll never remember. Let yeah. me just uh, let me just add a, a, a comment there. Uh, first off, for for those who may not be familiar uh, with our system, there are the engineers have tried to simplify ways of setting up the autofocus for servo operation to change it for different types of moving subjects. What Damien is talking about when he says case four is a setup that's designed to accommodate to a greater degree changes in subject speed, subjects that kind of have a tendency to start and stop and zig and zag rather than like an Olympic 100-yard sprinter just coming at a straight pace toward the camera. One very interesting thing is that out of the box at the default setting, which happens to be case one, the autofocusing system in this camera is better tuned for subjects that are changing speed rapidly than any of our previous cameras. So I'm not saying, Damien, that you won't be using Case 4 anymore. Just understand that even if you didn't put it on Case 4, the camera can accommodate changes in speed even better than it was able to previously. I, I think I speak for a lot of photographers, and I say that, like, I've set things at the wrong setting and had tremendous results. You know, like, <laughs> wow, I had a great game. <laughs> oh, I was on case yeah. six? Really? Well, like, really? How did I do yeah, that? Yeah, I met a guy you know? using six the yeah. other day. Yeah, exactly. You know, he probably had a great game, you know, but, sir, at well, the Outback Bowl. what are you using, 4-2? Mm -hmm. I use 4-2. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I used to use case two for football. Yeah. But now the better, more responsible autofocus, I think case 
case four. So case four for Peter, case four. Yeah. Uh, I'm using now case four as well. Yeah. <laughs> Starting today. Today. Case four. Hey, so Tom asks, what is case four? Oh. So on the back of the camera, you get to choose between, is it six total? Yeah, there are six settings in the autofocus menu on our high-end cameras. Yeah. Case one, two, three, And it's four, not five, unique six. to the 1DX Mark II. We've had this on the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark III on the 5DS, the 7D Mark II, and so on. Uh, to simplify, mm -hmm. adjusting the camera for different types of moving subjects. Case four is an option that tells the camera, hey, instead of expecting steady, continuous movement toward the camera, again, I gave the example of like an Olympic sprinter just coming straight at the camera at a steady pace, Case four is designed to greater accommodate changes in subject speed, like you have in a game like American football, where, you know, yeah, sometimes you have players, you know, breaking a run right at you without interference, but a lot of times, especially near the line, they're, they're zigging and zagging and beyond that, kind of, you know, kind of stop and starting, uh, you know, and so on. And so it we're, we're, seems like we're all liking four today. So four it is. I'm uh, betting the lottery on four. Are you betting the lottery yeah, on four? Yeah. There you I don't go. know how many fours or what combination. Just but, all fours. Yeah, okay. All right. So I, I know I know the guy that's asking this question. I know Bob. Bob says that he's got an important question for Damien. How's your golf game, buddy? Yeah, well, I'm in Ford. I should be working on it, right? But uh, I think it's today. kind of beyond uh, hope. You know, I think we're, you know, it's case zero for sure. Yeah. All righty. So uh, is it better for us to, is it, is it better for us in camera to do, the noise reduction in sharpening in camera or do it in post? And you have to realize, if you do noise reduction and sharpening in camera on a raw photo and you open it in Photoshop or Lightroom camera raw, it, doesn't, it ignores whatever you did in the camera. Those only work in JPEG. They only stick in JPEG. Rudy, would you like to add to this? Because you have Or if you process it in Canon's software. If you use software. Canon's yeah. own proprietary software, then you would. And, I, and my understanding is there are four to five people that do that. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe even <laughs> just more. messing with you. Just, <laughs> just messing with you, Rudy. Just had to do that because you're Rudy. You're Rudy the Love Man. All right. Um, so this one's, a, this one's, a, this is another Canony type question. We're going to ask you. I hate to, to do this because we've got like a guy that shot the Super Bowl sitting to my right, and uh, but we're going to ask you this one because it's a tough one and it's so tough. It's for Rudy. D. Philip asks, I'd like to know Canon's reason for not going with a mirrorless DSLR type body and choose to use mirror up instead, Rudy? Well, as far as going with a mirrorless concept for this type of camera, a high performance professional camera, there's no way you could get this kind of performance and in particular this kind of focusing performance at the present time given current technology, right, where the technology is today. with a mirrorless type of body. We're cer I certainly don't mean to say that mirrorless cameras don't have their virtues uh, because you, know, you can make a case that for certain types of shooting at a little bit more relaxed pace that mirrorless cameras in some ways make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, we have mirrorless cameras now, and I'm certain we'll have more in the future. Uh, this is, you know, designed from the ground up as a go-to camera for people that are, need extreme durability, extreme focusing performance, uh, and from time to time, extreme shooting speed. And, but I, I add what I mentioned before, that we don't want it to be thought of as just a sports camera. It's great when it's in the hands of an expert like a Damien or a Peter Reed Miller, uh, but it can be great for a lot of other applications too. A couple more questions. Um, can you use the depth of field preview button to switch from one shot to AI servo like the 1DX, or is there another way to switch? Yeah, there are no multiple ways to customize the camera. Yeah, I, thought I was going to say, I think you can put that in other spots. Yeah, you can put it in other spots. You can put it in either of the back buttons. Uh, time probably isn't going to allow us to go into a lot of detail here, but the custom controls within the custom functions menu on this camera in particular really give you some cool possibilities. That depth of field preview button you mentioned can be customized to do any of 13 different things, for instance. All right. Uh, Dan 2016, no, Rudy is not leaving us a sample camera. In <laughs> fact, we had two of them earlier, and I think one of them's already like been left. They like say, I'm sorry, this is going to go. Because uh, there's other, other people that are testing it, and there are, you know, websites that want to test it and all kinds of stuff. So we get them for a very short time. But, you know, we all know this. Um, Rudy can build one of them with his little tools by himself. He has a small set of tools, he builds them, he makes them out of wood, you'd swear it was the real thing. So, um, Damien, uh, 
question from Future Man 2016. Did you? How many remotes? Did you use any remotes at the Super Bowl? I did not use any remotes at the Super Bowl. There were a few remotes set up, uh, mostly to do overall. Football is very difficult for to remote. I mean, you can't really predict where the action's going to go. So, I mean, if you're doing a remote in football, it's obviously going to be uh, framed fairly loosely. So, uh, I did not do any remotes. Uh, I think mostly you're talking about remotes. You're talking about overalls of the stadium. You know, I, I would have gladly come and done some remotes. I'm pretty good with remotes. I would have gladly, if you'd did have you, asked did, me, oh, okay. I would have gladly come and done some remotes. Just They're tell me pretty how hard to want. trigger. You have to hit a button and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but it's when you hit the button. I think it's very critical. I think <laughs> either between you or Peter, you certainly could have had me do a remote. The did decisive you do remotes, moment, Peter? Yeah. Two guys not doing I could have been there doing remotes, getting you coffee, <laughs> whatever. All right. Um, uh, question. Uh, how many focus points or, or, and or pattern do you use when you're shooting sports? Well, I'm the, I, I use one, the center one, and that's the only one I use pretty much. I use the expanded points uh, thing. You know, to me, so much of sports is about keeping it in focus and keeping all that action, which is like, you know, it's a train wreck out there, bodies flying all over the place, and trying to keep everything in focus. The easiest thing for me to do is to use that center point. Also, it's the fastest focusing one. Yeah, can well. I say something? The more I ask the higher-end shooters, the less they mess with all the stuff. Can I tell you that? Like, you talk to somebody who's really, really good. Like, you guys are, like, insane. I mean, you're, you're shooting the Super Bowl, 38 Super Bowls. Don't even look at me. <laughs> but you, you get these guys that are so good, and you see their images, and they're just nailing this stuff. And they're just using the simplest settings. I remember, so a, a guy that I think is really quite good here locally, Brian Blanco, is a very, very good football photographer. He's just a very good photographer. Just, you know, he, he like, shoots for AP or Getty or somebody. And he's, always, he's very, very good. Super nice guy. I walk over him one day on the sidelines like, dude, what are you setting? What are you doing with focus? Because I see his stuff all the time, and I'm like, dang, his stuff is awesome. It's sharp, and he's, he catches everything. He's like, you guys, he's like, he catches, you know, everything. You know, I, I just use the defaults. He, he had a really great saying, if I don't have a problem, I don't mess with it. Like, if it's working and everything's there, I don't go in and tweak all that stuff. It's like the, the better the shooter, the less they're doing in the camera, and the more they're focusing on the stuff that you were just talking about. It's like, to me, it's a concentration game. I always say I'm like a pretty good photographer when I'm concentrating. When I'm thinking about other stuff, I want to minimize the distractions. There's enough distractions out there as it is. Cheerleaders, security guards, uh, you know, there's all these things you've got to think about. Uh, you know, how you're going to photograph the game, what you're going to, what, how, what, what plays you're anticipating, all those kinds of things. I really don't want to be like bogged down with like a bunch of camera settings. That's not, that's not what I do. I do, you know, the game. I'm thinking about the game and how to capture the pictures and being in the right spot, all those kinds of things. So, yeah, I think you need to keep your camera settings something that you feel comfortable with and something that's going to allow you to devote your attention and your concentration to your coverage of the game and not to learning the camera. One of the reasons why no one likes to go out with a new piece of equipment not having used it, which was, you know, we got those cameras at the Pro Bowl and had not used them at all, at all. You shot the Pro Bowl too? Yeah. In Hawaii? Yeah, uh, it was in Honolulu, Scott. It's yeah. time for you yeah. to go. It's yeah. time for you to go. Yeah. Who can we get here that wasn't at the Super Bowl or the Pro Bowl that can sit up here where Damien was sitting? This is sick. Peter, please tell me you didn't shoot the Pro Bowl. I did that. I oh, come on. It was a great hotel, too. Like, it, yeah. Hey, it did like, I mention yeah. I shot the Outback Bowl? <laughs> it was good. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It was a good game. My team won and everything. In defense of that, Scott, I have to tell you, like, it's not always. As a matter of fact, rarely is the Super Bowl a great game for, um, for photographers. I mean, really, this is like my 29th Super Bowl, and I've walked away with once with, like, well, I crushed it. I did it. I finally did it. I got what I wanted. I had the key picture, the key play, and it was an iconic image. The other, well, I had one other cover, so, you know, maybe that was okay. But the 27 of them, at least, you walked away and said, yeah, I Came in with high hopes and left with them dashed. Hey, you know what? I'd be happy to go to the Super Bowl and say I didn't get anything. But I got to shoot the Super Bowl. You know, I have a 10-year-old daughter. Dad, when are you going to shoot the Super Bowl? Never! <laughs> so, <laughs> one day, honey, one day, when I'm 100. Okay, a um, couple more questions. Uh, do you ever get nervous shooting the Super Bowl? Oh, my God, yeah. You know, it's like it's not like a, an athlete where you're like, you know, throwing up before the game and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm mean, absolutely. The bigger the assignment, the more nerves you have. Always, always, you're worried about it more. I mean, we're all we. It's a different. 
I, even, you know, like guys like Peter and I, we've known each other forever. And, you know, it's like, but we, I noticed a difference in Peter on game day. I mean, it's like Super Bowl. The other games, not so much. But the Super Bowl, yeah, absolutely. You get nervous. You're, you know, it's a big assignment. You want to do the best you can. Don Chevalier asks, do you notice any difference in focus response time on your long glass with a new buddy? It acquires with faster. It acquires faster. It acquires faster, faster yeah, does, absolutely. It? Yeah, definitely. I don't know what, what the difference is, but it's acquiring faster. Hey, what is the king of autofocus? It's acquiring faster, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You got to get there first. I mean, it's like it's always like, you know, they talk about frame rate all the time, but it's almost always the first frame. You know, and most, you know, peak action situation because you got to get there. You know, the framing rate's nice when something's coming at you, but when you got to get to the play, well, then you need to, you know, you need to yeah. have uh, And that's you a know, heartbreaker, the right? When you 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 see where the play is going, unless it's going to a receiver and you zoom over there and you hit it and it's out of focus. Yeah. It's just that yeah. breaks your heart because yeah. that first moment, like you said, that first frame, that's the that's not the one where they're getting ready to jump up. By the time you see where the play is going, you get on them. It's time to make the shot. That's that moment, that peak action. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, we talked about that one. We talked about that one. So Anonymous2387, Damien, do you know if the four photographers from Keepers of the Streak, so these are the guys that have been shot every single Super Bowl, made it to Super Bowl 50? They, all of them made it. Did yeah, they? Yeah, they all made it. It was great. We actually had a dinner on Wednesday night of the Super Bowl week in which we – Wednesday night or Thursday night? Thursday night. Thursday night, we had a dinner in which a lot of photographers got together, and those guys were all there, except uh, Walter Yost did not make it. He flew in on Friday or Saturday, but but there oh, were. But he still shot the game. Yeah, he still shot the game. You know, yeah. I follow him on Instagram. He's just brilliant. He he crushed he's, it. He got like a thousand followers on Instagram. Some crazy number. Oh yeah, he's ten thousand something. He, yeah. he's, he's great. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, do you have to take out extra insurance to shoot sports games in case you get hurt if a player comes? hurtling into you uh, but the answer to that is that uh, you sign when you accept your credential you sign a waiver that basically says that you know if you get hurt tough luck it's um, on you. yeah so good you know have your health insurance up to date um yeah no there's no uh, no coverage for that i've only been hit twice actually covering football in all the years i've been doing it you know all right um GJDP asked one of me, and they said, apart from Canon's obvious ability for a better video, which we talked about that quite a bit earlier, where do you think the 1DX Mark II will shine over the D5 and vice versa? So I can only, now I haven't shot the D5, so it's not really fair for me to say anything about their image quality or anything else. So all I can do is just look at, actually, I saw a thing from B&H, B&H sent out a thing when the D5 came out, and that's as much as I've had to look at it. But I would say this, and this is the only thing I can say, and you're asking me for an unbiased thing, and there's no way for me to give you an unbiased when I've gotten to shoot this great new camera and I've never even seen, except for a picture on B&H's website, of what the D5 looks like. Plus, I shoot Canon, so I'm biased towards Canon, so know that up front. Uh, all I can do is look at the specs. The only spec that really, really stands out to me is that it, the, the I've been shooting a camera that was 12 frames a second for three years, for three seasons in a row, I've been shooting at 12 frames a second. The D5 just got to 12 frames a second. I've already been doing that for three years. With the 1DX Mark II, I'm at 14 frames a second. That being said, I don't actually own a 1DX Mark II. I got to use one for a couple of days, but I don't actually own one. Now, I am going to sell a number of things. I've talked to my wife. We're in the negotiations on this. Some guitars will probably be sold. Various <laughs> things will be sold. She's kind of holding it right now, but I think she's weakening. It's going to take a little work. I'm hoping to, hoping to be able to get one. But here's the thing is, so all I can do is that, that one thing. And so let's just say that somehow or another, it's not going to happen. But Nikon said, we'll send Scott a D5 and shoot it for the weekend. Can I tell you what? There are probably things I really like about it. There's probably things I really don't like about it. But the thing that I used to shoot Nikon and the thing that really got me over was the autofocus. That was, there were, I could tell you about the ergonomics and different things that were like it. But when you get more shots in focus, th that's it. Two frames a second extra, that was great. It really made me want to do it and all. But when you get more shots in focus, for a sports photographer or a wildlife photographer, that's the holy grail of it. So that was the old camera. The old 1DX had the best autofocus I've ever used in my life. This one's better. I haven't tried the Nikon. Anything I tell you would be a guess. But the one thing I can tell you is just looking at the specs, I... I don't want to go back to 12 frames a second. I shot 14 and I was like, oh, that's big.
kidding. All right. Hey, um, we are, we, we're going to take a break, but I want to tell you a couple things. First off, we got a couple of giveaways. When we come back from break, we're going to bid adieu to Rudy. We're going to send Rudy off into the sunset and we're going to bring back Peter Reed Miller and we're going to sing some songs. So, um, so that's just a moment. But before I want to tell you, we've got a couple of prizes because we always have prizes here on El Grita Rooney. First is we're giving away a copy of the hottest selling book of the year. And I wish I had written it, but I didn't. It's Peter Hurley's <laughs> The Headshot. Um, we did help produce him. We did help produce it. It's published by Peach Pit Press, but we work with Peter on the book. It's an awesome book. Peter's an awesome guy, and it's just, just amazing. And uh, he shoots uh, the new Canon 5DR, is it? 5D SR. Yes, SR, SR, that's what he used. And, and he used to shoot medium format. He was a medium format guy. And mastering the model shoot by one of the greatest humans and the coolest guys on the planet, Frank Duerhoff. I think it's the best book ever written on the topic, but I was the editor, I'm biased. But at least I'm telling you, I'm biased. Okay, we're giving away both of these. How do you win these? Well, it's quite complicated. First, you must buy a Canon 1DX. No, you're going to go to our new, look at our new webcast contents form. So you go to kelby1.com webcast dash contest. There's a new submission form. You choose which show. Oh, I was watching The Grid. You put in your name, you put in your email address, you put in which one you want to win. The comment thing is important. Tell us you want to win Frank's book or Peter's book. We'll draw winners and we'll send you not only the book, but a, no. Just the book. That's all you get. All right. So um, we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're still answering your questions. So we, this is gonna, we're going to wrap up because we're kind of over time already. But when we come back, we're going to bring Peter back on the set. Rudy, thank you very much for being on here. And, Scott, what and a pleasure. Answering a bunch of hard questions that we don't know. But that's exactly why we wanted to have you here. Because, and it's, this is not me saying this, this is the audience. You're the smartest guy in the photo industry. Well, I, I tell you what, there's a lot of other stiff competition out there, but I thank you there guys may for the be, kind words. But you're certainly our favorite. Yeah, but we don't know any of them, Rudy. And we so don't know them, Rudy. Rudy. So no, I just, I, but too, here's what kind. I want to do. Can we do this? Juan, can we do this? Yeah. I'm going to say that sentence, and then can we slowly fade out with the jib and just quiet, we'll just let it marinate. When we come back, Peter Reed Mill will be here. <laughs> here we go. And we bid adieu to our good friend Rudy, who is the smartest guy in the camera industry, in the photo industry. I'm Cliff Mountner. I've always envisioned taking Kelby One for an inside look at how I approach a real wedding. This is authentic. This is an actual client that has allowed me to capture their day and bring Kelby One along. You're gonna see how I approach every element of the day. We're talking about an overall view at my approach. I really hope you take a moment to check out my brand new classes, A Real Wedding, live and uncensored, only on KelbyOne.com. Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here. I want to tell you about the brand new version of my book. It's the Photoshop Elements 14 book for digital photographers. In the latest edition of the book, I've added lots of new techniques, along with my current start to finish workflow. And of course, I cover all the new features that Adobe added to Elements in this most recent update. And there are some very cool new goodies you're gonna love. I start off by teaching you how to organize your images. The organizer part of Elements is a big part of the experience, and I teach you just the important stuff you really need to know. Then we jump right into Elements' own version of Camera Raw, and I know that when I'm done, you will know it like a champ. It's incredibly powerful, but very easy to learn. You'll also want to know how to deal with common problems that photographers run into day in and day out. You want to learn the latest finishing touches, the latest special effects, the latest popular looks, and I cover all of that and so much more in my brand new book. It's the Photoshop Elements 14 book for digital photographers. Find it wherever really cool books are sold. All right, we're back. We got Peter on the set here. We got Damien here and uh, I'm surrounded by guys who didn't shoot the Outback Bowl. And so that's the thing. Yeah, you guys did the Super Bowl. It's okay, but you know, it's not the Outback Bowl. I think you'd have to, and I think you'd both have to agree. It's it's not the Outback Bowl, is it? I, no, I, but you know what? The Outback Bowl could be better. Here's the thing, and I'm, Peter is going to agree with me 100% about this. I know we talk about it all the time. As a photographer, the number one thing you root for is great pictures. Well, the Super Bowl certainly didn't fall in that category this year. You know, you root for other things, too. You know, you root for good food in the press room yeah. and, you know, good, yeah, parking good parking and stuff good, like that. But, good, you know, like, really, away. you root for good pictures first and foremost. So if it happens at the Outback Bowl, that 
fine. You know, you still want to get the ultimate picture. If it happens to the Outback Bowl, it's fine. If it happens at the Super Bowl, that's fine. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Whatever. I think that's true. It's 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 you about know? the pictures, not, right, not about the game. Not about the event. Well, can I tell you something? And this is honest, goodness, truth. The lunch was catered by the Outback Bowl. <laughs> it was Outback Steakhouse did the lunch. At well, the Outback Bowl. Well, that's a step yeah. up so, from a lot yeah. of Yes, of yes it is. If the pictures are good, they got two out of the three. Yeah. A couple so, of yeah. comments. Yeah. Susby says, Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. Rudy. Anonymous yeah. 2387 says, three top guests in one show. We're spoiled now. Thanks, Scott. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, so I just, uh, we, we've talked a lot about cameras and gear and stuff, you know. So what was, I, I, if, if I could, what's the, what's the experience like? Like, what was it like, you know? kind of shooting the Super Bowl. You guys done it to death. You're just kind of old hats at it. But for us that have never done it, you know, so. It's like an event with a football game sort of sporadically inserted. I mean, it's so much of a, it's an all day thing. I mean, I think we left our, I left my hotel before nine o'clock in the morning for a 3.30 game, got back at 11 o'clock at night, you know, and it's all this other stuff. And it's very hard, as, as Damien was talking earlier about keeping yourself mentally focused. It's extremely hard to do at this game because there's so much else going on. There's so many distractions. Right. And you're shooting a lot before the game? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of just try to do it because I'm sort of nervous. I'm sort of wound up, like Damien would say. So, yeah, we'll shoot some Cam Newton. We'll shoot some some uh, Manning, some Peyton. And now, are you moving these images over the wire? Are you moving them? Or they you... they will go in my take. Yeah, we weren't shooting on a, on a uh, deadline situation. Oh, okay. Uh, but that stuff sells. The other thing, too, though, about like shooting pregame at this particular Super Bowl, the light was killer yes, the light during was pregame, man. man. It was like come beam it down low, oh, great really? illumination, yeah. dark backgrounds if you shot one direction. So that part of it, again, it's a aesthetic thing. You know, I may not shoot that picture during a game in which it's like harsh contrasting light, yeah. but, you know, for this, it is the Super Bowl, and every part of the Super Bowl gets documented because it has so much interest, you know, whereas some other, you know, events may not have as much interest. How, yeah. how are the working, like, so this is the new Levi Stadium uh, outside of San Francisco in Santa Clara, I believe. Yes. Yeah. How was the, like, working environment, the actual, like, photo workroom, nice, good, indifferent? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the photo workroom is amazing. Now, we didn't really use it because we weren't on deadline, but, yeah, yeah, it's, like, right off the field. It's massive. Big, big, yeah, big it's, huge it's area. Big. Yeah, um, terrific. There was a lot of room on the sidelines. It was good room on the end zone. and So, yeah, it's a good stadium to shoot in. How many photographers would you, would you say were shooting the game overall? 8,000. Yeah, it okay, seemed no. that way. It seemed that way. No, okay, and, no, and no. video guys. Yeah. Still <laughs> photographers, I would say maybe 200. Yeah, I, Ooh, that's it a was. Lot. It was definitely well. It was a smaller crowd than usual. It seemed to me like they may have put more photographers overhead at yes. this Super Bowl. Yeah. The sideline didn't seem quite as crowded as it was maybe no. you know six, eight, ten years ago no. or something. No. Are, are you jockeying a lot for position? Or are you pretty much able to get where you yeah, want? Yeah, I carry a knife. With, yeah, it, yeah, it I, I like to crowbar. Right out of there. Yeah. Crowbar. Yeah, just yeah. Right do you put there. your camera bag or yeah. is it like go on the side where you normally put a, yeah. uh, I have a little yeah. holster for right. it? Yeah. And so uh, just just now for the sports photographer in me that wants to pick your brains for just a minute, what's your second body like? What, are you, what lens are you using on your second body? Uh, 24 to 70 around my neck. 24 to 70 around your neck. How, yeah. many, how many are you carrying total? Uh, three for the Super Bowl. Three. Between two and three. I had three. I had a 70 to 200. Then I had the 200 to 400. 16 to, or, uh, 24 to 70 around my neck. Are they all like 1DXs like everyone? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's heavy, right? Yeah. Three? Yeah. And a 400 or 200 to 400? Two to four, yeah. 200 yeah. to four. Do you use a 200 to four at night or do you just still... I'm kind of on the fence. Some stadiums I will. Um, I think I will more now with the new camera uh, because you throw that extender in your 5.6. I still will like to take the uh, 400 to 8. Yeah. Out once the reason I ask, guys, for you watching at home, so if you have the 200 to 400, one of the greatest things about it, it has a built-in 1.4 tele extender. You don't have to take your camera off and put it on. It's in. It's built yes, into the lens. The you flip a switch, and boom, you're, you, you go up. It increases your, your thing to 500. and takes your 400 makes it 5.60. But you lose a stop of light. So it starts at F4. When you flip that switch, you're at F5.6, which in a day game, it means nothing. At night, it means your ISO just went from 1,600. No, it wouldn't be 1,600 at night. It'd be 4,000 up to at least 6,400 or 8,000. Yeah. 8, 8, 8, yeah. So it's, that flip of the switch makes a big difference. Of course, depending on the stadium and depending on many things. Yeah. All right. And uh, overall... Um, experience of uh, shooting a Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, you know, like I, you you anticipate it all year, you know, it's like it's, it's the culmination of the season. Peter and I are football guys, you know, with the yeah. big deal yeah. for us. I mean, we, you know, you like to, you like to go, you like to see your friends and do the stuff. You root for a good game. 
Uh, like I said, most of the time you're disappointed about the game, but you know, it's like, you know, that's just the nature of yeah. our work is that yeah. you're never, the thing about sports photography is, I think photography in general, but certainly about sports photography is you are never going to get every picture. It will not True. happen. True. If it happens, strike me dead with a lightning bolt on the field. <laughs> you know, it will never happen, you know? So. Yeah, because you know what? Even if you, even if you, because if you know the game, which is one of the keys to being a good football photographer, you kind of have to anticipate where it's going. So let's say that you know, you know what? I happen to know that this particular quarterback loves to throw a fade into this particular corner. I'm going to be there waiting for it. And son of a gun, you see the play folding exactly like you thought it would. All of a sudden, he gets flushed out of the pocket and has to flow, throw to the other side right, of the field. Right. And you were in the perfect position. Or for jubilation, the guy, the guy gets, he, he makes a touchdown and he runs straight in front of you, and you're like the guy there. Or he turns and runs the complete opposite direction. There's just things you have no control over that even if you're really experienced and you know the most likely scenario is blank, at the last second it can turn and go the complete opposite direction. Yep. Yeah, it's a total crapshoot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a total – I'm glad to hear you say that. It's a total crapshoot because, you know, a lot of times that, that's, that's the thing I think I beat myself – up the most over is you get think when you get in position where you think this is mm -hmm. going to happen or his hot receiver today is blank and son of a gun when you know he's going to go to him you now do you guys you, you will you yeah if you ever get that feeling he's going to whoever right sure do you, like odell beckham do you say i'm just going to isolate on him from time to time yeah and it's yeah. a high risk thing yeah you is. get a lot of shots of odell beckham blocking downfield right. like right. dang it <laughs> yeah well, but when it pays something. off it yeah. pays off big yeah yeah yeah, if you're there early, obviously it pays yeah, off big. It's, you know, it's pretty high risk, high reward. No, it is. It's a high risk. I mean, like I follow them right off the line. Like when they start going, yeah. and what's really bad is when you can see that they're not like they're, you've they're already starting to pull up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they're starting to pull up, there. and you're yeah. like, oh yeah. no. Yeah. Or what's worse is you say, I'm isoing him. I know it's going to him, and you iso on them, and then you they start to run, and they are running a pattern, and then you hear the crowd cheering. Yeah, and yeah. you're right on them, yeah. and you know, you know the ball's There's not no coming ball to them. Yeah. You hear them cheering like something happened. Yeah. It's not the cheer that you get when there's a pass and there's anticipation. It's like somebody got the ball and they just broke loose and you low. Yeah. I, bye, yeah. Yeah. bye play. Yeah. yeah. And bye. Then you, then you yeah, watch no, the no, instant no. replay board afterwards yeah. to see what you missed. Yeah. What you missed, you know, like, yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. So now, can we have confession, guys? This will make me feel a lot better. Do you ever fall for the fake? Come sure. on. Sure. Do I you? do. I, do. I think they're getting a lot better at the fake, yeah. so I'm just getting to be a worse photographer. Um, yeah, okay. de definitely. I, I think right. the misdirection stuff yeah. is definitely getting better. I mean, you know. Good, because, man, I, there's nothing worse to crank off of, like, you know what's bad about 14 frames a second? 14 when you frames shoot six, of the guy going like Yeah, this. when you shoot yeah. 16, 16 seconds of this. And then you yeah. go, and then you hear the cheering, and you're like, oh, I fell for the fake. Yeah. But I'm glad to hear it just doesn't happen to me No. at the Outback Bowl. <laughs> All right. Any any last comment? We we should probably talk about the camera because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you guys here. And Cannon was nice enough to to go. Hey, I could talk to him for you if you want. <laughs> Would you? Number one, they're here, my heroes anyway. But number two, it's cool that you guys got to shoot that. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was well. Amazing. The camera, the camera rocks, no yes. doubt. I mean, yes. you know, we all all areas that you know are crucial to sports photography but as rudy pointed out not just sports photography photography in general have been improved and uh you know it's a it's a to me it's a must-have um so yeah you know i think all aspect file buffer uh metering something we didn't talk about too much no, the metering didn't. system is definitely improved yeah. as well yeah. Good point. Which makes um, these situations in which the lighting is tricky, you know, shadow highlight difficulty. Uh, I think your auto modes are, are, because the metering is so good, your auto modes have become more viable. You know, something that I would, I don't necessarily say I'd rely on it, but in a tough situation, I might. Yeah, I agree with you, Damien, that me I did notice metering is a lot more precise. Yeah. And I mean, basically, you had what was the best camera going with the Mark One, and now you've got. A better camera in just about every respect so it's like it's a win-win you know a few years ago i was shooting the beef o brady's bowl <laughs> I, I, I shot it i shot it twice the beef o brady's bowl and it's shot in a baseball stadium which makes it really awesome anyway uh guys thank you so much damien thank you very much uh, for being here thank and for God. sharing your stuff peter Scott, as always thank you for having and, me and uh, thank you for sharing your images so uh, I, I i know to go home and throw my 
throw my cameras in the trash, or if you want to find them on eBay, where you'll find them, because, you know, I can shoot people. I, I shoot a lot of people. That sounds bad. I photograph a lot of portraits. Shooting people, that doesn't sound very good. Uh, I want to thank our friends from Canon for hooking us all up today and getting yeah. us together. And, of course, thanks to Rudy, 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 uh, Rudy. Who, who rocked it. Oh, last question. Who got the cover? Anybody get the cover we know? Uh, yeah, I know who got it. It was just out, right? Don Morale got yeah. the cover? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Don Morale? Yeah. Hats off to you. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Canon. Thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to Squarespace. Feel the love, Squarespace. We love Squarespace. And we love you guys. Thanks very much. We'll catch you next Wednesday.